Welcome back to E304, Intro to Nanoscience and Technology. In this lecture, I'd like to summarize what we know so far from our reading and from the other video about the double slit experiment and what it means about the dual nature of electrons, that they act as both particles as well as waves. So let's review what we know. So let's consider the case of bullets. In other words, hard particles through a double slit. And I do encourage you to write this in your notes. It'll help you remember. It's really an important aspect of learning. All right, so let's suppose that we have some kind of gun. This could be a gun shooting tennis balls. It could be a gun shooting bullets. Um, your book talks about bullets, so let's use that language. And let's suppose that we have a screen or a a kind of wall or um, a shield where there are two slits um, in here. And this would be slit one, we could say. And this can be slit two. And if we have bullets being shot through, What we would expect, in this case, on a screen that, for example, could be over here, is that we should imagine a, um, a collector that could count these bullets, right? And so if we imagine what would happen here, well, we would see from one of these um, slits, we should see just one of them. So if we covered up one of the slits and have the bullets coming on through, well, we should see most of them um, centered on the region uh, directly at an angle that goes from the gun through the slit and all the way over here. And then, of course, if we did the opposite and we covered that up, then we would have a similar kind of distribution here. And if they're close enough, well, then, of course, we would also start to get them to add up, and then we really couldn't see them uh, as distinct. And another way to, to draw this is by a kind of um, um, histogram of this. And, and so that's what I'd like to draw right now and say in this case that in um, this dimension, I guess this is x, and then along this dimension, this might be the power or the number of particles versus x. And I'd like this to be the case where we've got just one of the um, just one of the slits open at a time, well, we should see a distribution that would be something like that for the first slit, and then a corresponding distribution for the second slit. All right, no surprise there. And then, just for completeness, let's look at what we would expect from both slits open at the same time. When we have particles, we should expect something like that. And I'm going to note that as P1 subscript 2. And in this case, um, this means that what we should ultimately see is that the distribution or the histogram for this second case is equal simply to the addition of the distributions of the individual slits. All right, so that's what we should expect to happen with things that act just like particles, like bullets, baseballs, and things like that. Now, what happens, as another point of comparison, with a wave, or something that we know is, is a wave? So let's talk about waves through a double slit. All right, well, in that case, let's suppose that we have some wave generator, some way to generate waves, and then we have a similar arrangement of a slit. And so again, this is slit one. This is slit two. Well, 
as you may have seen yourself either in some of the videos that we've shown or perhaps even yourself on water, that once two waves are close to each other um, and they are acting at the same time in the same liquid, for example, on the surface of a lake, we start to see that they overlap and they interact. And eventually, they have multiple peaks and troughs, as we say. And so we can have a screen here as, as well, or this is sometimes called a backstop. And what we can do is look at the histogram of where we have a, uh, a lot of waviness or vibration or where we have very little. And what we would see is a, a distribution, again, something like this. This can be the, the amount of vibration there is from the wave, that if we have just one of these waves, just wave one, we should see a distribution something like this. And actually that's very much like we saw from the bullets coming through a single slit. And if we see just the second one, we should see another distribution just like that. And that is, of course, one slit at a time. All right, now what happens when we have both slits? And in fact, maybe we should add that to my last page here, on the page where we had the bullets through double slit. This case is when we had both slits open at the same time. All right, so in this case we have waves going through double slit, and what happens here when we have both? Well, no, actually it's, it's really surprising that in fact we do not just get the sum, what we get is a structured combination of these two waves, a, uh, a situation where the, the sum, or this P1, 2, is not equal to the sum of P1 plus P2, but rather a combination where they add or subtract depending on the position of these waves. And this is actually really surprising, but it is something that we know is um, is definitely something that we can see even in waves on a, on a pond, on a, on a liquid. All right, so this is something that we know happens with waves when they come together. And what we talked about first with bullets through a double slit is what we know about particles. So first case was particles, this was waves. So now we come to the interesting bit about electrons. So let's get out a new sheet of paper and let's talk about electrons through a double slit. All right, so let's suppose now we have something that produces electrons. Sometimes this is called an electron gun. And again, let's have two slits arranged near one another. And let's consider what happens on a screen. Well, in this case, as before, what we see in terms of the density or the histogram of the electrons in X, this is the case for one slit at a time. Well, then we get those two distributions. This would be P1, P2. Right, and in your notes, of course, you can draw these electrons as well. It's uh, entirely possible um, to, to make sure that we release just one electron at a time, um, if so desired. All right, and then this second case is what we see in experiment when we look at just um, electrons going through these double slits, but where both slits are open at the same time. And in this case, we get something surprising. We get something that doesn't look like the bullets, but rather looks like the waves. So when both slits are open, we get this constructive and destructive interference. And of course, this is not equal to the simple sum of these two things. 
So that is shocking. Let me show you an example experimentally of what this looks like. This is a figure from your textbook that you can, you can also see. And what we're looking at here is a case of just a few electrons coming onto a detector. Um, I think there's seven there in that picture. And then a few more are sent through double slits, and then you can start to see that it's uh, approximately random, um, and you really can't see very much pattern. And then a little bit more in, in this third picture, and we can vaguely start to see a pattern emerging. And then lastly, we get to this last picture, where now we see bright and dark fringes, actually, uh, these bright and dark regions where the electrons are um, collecting more in some regions and less in other regions. And so this is exactly what we see with electrons coming through a double slit. This is wave behavior, definitely, but from electrons, these things that we always thought were simply particles. All right, so that's part of the interesting bit. We have both a particle nature and a wave nature to electrons, but there's more. And this part is where I think we can really lose our minds. This is... This is really cool. All right, so let's take the case of electrons now being observed, not just at the screen, but on their way to the screen. All right, so again, in this case, we have an electron gun. We have two slits, one and two, and we have a screen of some kind. And what we're going to look at is what happens over here on this screen as far as the histogram goes. But now we're going to introduce something new. We're going to introduce an observer, or we're going to introduce some photons, and your book illustrates it as a flashlight that is uh, viewing the photons, and so, I'm sorry, that is uh, sending photons into the region that has electrons, which can be detected. So let's, let's draw the electrons in red, and what I'll draw is the, are the photons in these blue rays. All right, and so I'm not going to tell you the details. The details don't really matter, but it is entirely possible to shine light in this portion just after, or actually just before, the, uh, the two slits and look for a, an electron. And if we see the electron, it's possible to, de um, or if the photon interacts with the electron, it's entirely possible to detect that, and then we can know um, where the electron was. Because that's kind of the really interesting aspect of the dual nature is that in this case, when electrons pass through the double slit, um, when this interference pattern appears, even when we send one electron through at a time, it means to some extent, uh, if not in, in, in its entirety, that the electron is actually going through both of them at the same time, even though it is, uh, in many respects, a particle. All right, so now when we shine some light to detect whether it's gone through one or both of the slits, Let's see what happens. All right, so let's consider the case where we don't have any light and we send just, go back to my original colors, if we send light through, I'm sorry, if we send electrons through one slit at a time, then we get the same pattern. And it turns out that that's the same pattern we get whether we shine light or not onto this region. Okay, now let's, let's blow your mind. Bear with me here. Now this is the case when we have both slits open, but I'd like to draw two cases. One case, so this is both, both slits are open, but here we have the lights on. And here we have the lights off. All right, and keep in mind that this case that we already drew is when we have no light. So in, 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 in actuality, the lights were off there. All right, now, so let's draw then the lights off case because we already know what that is, right? That we get this wave nature, definitely. So what happens here? And that's the interesting bit. 
Well, the really amazing thing is that once we shine light here, and if the photons from our observation interact with the electrons that are coming through here, then they suddenly go back to being particles. And we wind up getting this distribution. That is just amazing. And what that means is, of course, that by making a measurement with a photon on the electron, we actually influence the electron to, um, to act like a particle. And in fact, to act in, act in such a way that it only goes through one of these slits. So, all right, so it turns out that, of course, the photon doesn't have any mass, but it has momentum. And if it interacts with the electron, it can transfer that momentum to the electron and it can influence it. So after the collision, the electron's momentum is no longer the same as it was before it interacted. And we don't actually know what it is. But once we do that, we know where the electron is and where its location was because we can shine the light just in this portion or just in this portion um, if, we, if we so choose. Right? That's entirely possible. So all this wraps up to something rather um, interesting that can be disturbing to some, and that is that we cannot know the momentum and the position with complete accuracy at the same time. And this is a principle known as the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Uh, after the uh, person who uh, developed this, and um, and so let's let's go back here. What this can tell us, remember, is that if we observe with a photon which has momentum, we can determine the location or the position of a photon at a particular time, for example, pretty precisely. But it also teaches us that we can't know its momentum. And so this principle is something that I'll uh, write down with a well-known expression. You probably have seen it before. And it really means simply that the uncertainty in the position measurement times the uncertainty in the momentum measurement always has to be greater than a constant that turns out to be related to Planck's constant. And, um, and of course, this uh, uh, is, uh, is related to a quote that's in your textbook. That, uh, that I'll quote, and it says, accepting quantum mechanics means feeling certain that you are uncertain. All right, so um, I'm going to post a video uh, that will go more into this uh, after this, and I hope that you can see the, the amazing and surprising aspects of this. But remember, this means that we cannot know the uh, position and the momentum at the same time with complete accuracy.